Today's exercise is something that we often face as RPA developers, that is browser automation. We want to log into an area using a username and a password, and we want to click buttons, take screenshots and the likes. So what we will do is to open up a Google and then search for the internet login like this and take the first hit. That is the login page, the internet. This is a sample page which we can practice on. Here we need to fill in username, password and then click login. This is not truly compliant because the username is up here, Tom Smith, and the password is even here too. So let's create it in Power Automate for desktop and talk about the best practices and how we can improve the robot. So if I go to Power Automate for desktop and then click New Flow. So here I will say browsers, you can call yours, whatever you want. So now I open up the flow and let me maximize this. So this is our blank canvas. First, we will need to open up a browser. And if you haven't installed the browser extension, you need to do that. You can click the video up in the right corner that will take you through that process. But I assume you already have installed the browser extensions, then we can just open it. So if I go over here to actions and then search for a launch, I can either choose Chrome, Microsoft Edge or Firefox. Don't go with the Internet Explorer, that is outdated. I prefer Chrome, but feel free to take the edge as well. Here I'll launch a new instance and I need a URL. So I go back to my browser and up here I will copy the entire web address, Control C, go back to my Power Automate for desktop. Now I can paste in the URL here. This launch new Chrome will produce a variable called browser. So then I click, can click save. This also means that I can refer to this variable if I want to do something in this window. Let me show you. So if I close down this page here and go back to my Power Automate for desktop and run, I will open up a new browser that will take me to this page. So we already created the first step. That was easy, wasn't it? Now we need to store the username and password. Obviously we would in real life, we would store this password a bit more secure, but you'll get the intuition and we can easily store it in, for example, Cyborg later. So if I go back here and let me just copy this username first. So market, control C, go back to your Power Automate for desktop. We can create the username as a variable in two ways. We can either use the set variable as we did before, or we can create it as an input variable. We'll usually want to do that because we will store the credentials in some kind of a secure way. So if I click this plus here, I'll say input. So now I give my variable a name. I'll not call it new input. I'll call this username. The default value, well, I just copied that. So control V, paste it in. The external name I will not use, but I will just use the same one as the internal name. You can give it a description, that's fine. Then I click create. Now I have my username variable and let's go back to the browser here and take the password. So if I mark this control C, I'll do the exact same thing. Almost I'll go back here and create a new input variable. So click the plus sign, click input here. I will say password like this. I'll give it the default value super secret password. I'll give it the same external name. And here I can mark as sensitive and look what's happened. So if I click create here, it will not get shown up here. That is clever. If for example, other people come to the robot, they cannot see this sensitive value. They will, however, be able to see it if they click here. So now I'm launching a new browser and I stored these two username and password as variables. Now I can use them to type them in here. So first let's fix the username field. So if I go back here, what I'll need now is a populate text field on web page. So go search for that. Make sure you take the one on the web form filling and drag it in. So here you can see I refer to my browser instance variable. That was the one we created up here. Now we need a UI element. 
A UI element is everything you'll see on the web page. So if I click the drop down here, you can see I can add a UI element. So if I click here, all the elements that I can choose, um, let me move this a bit, is available in the red ones. So I want to type something in. You can see I can, e I can even send text to these fields, for example. Of course, nothing will happen, but I can do it. I can send it to all the UI elements on the web page. Since we want the username, I find that, press Control, left click with your mouse, and our UI element is created. Now I need to say, what do I want to fill in? Well, I wanted to fill in the username that we just created as a variable up here. So to do so, I click the X here, then find the username, you can double click it. That one will get typed in here. You could also write it out yourself, percentage signs and then username, but it's more easy and you'll reduce the risk of misspelling things by just choosing it automatically. Then I can click save. And let me just close this browser window again. We can see that we can make it work. So we launch a new Chrome and we fill in the username. It's that easy. Let me show you a bit of the background around this, how we can create these elements and how we can edit them. So if I go back to Power Automate for desktop, you can see that uh, this uh, populate text field input text username, that, runs, that one originates from the UI element. So if I go over here, click the UI elements, you can see it here. So this is our UI element inside of this web page. First of all, do rename all your UI elements so you can easily come back to them. What you will do is to go over here and then you can press either F2 like this, or you can just right click, click rename. Here I'll just say, I'll call this username field. This one will make it easy to maintain in the future. To inspect the address, let me just double click here. And you can see here the address is input, hard brackets ID equals username. Let me show you how Power Automate for desktop got this address. So if I go back to my browser, one thing that I'll introduce you for, you don't have to completely understand it, just know it's there. I'll uh, be more elaborate in later lessons. So if you press F12 here, and this works whether you got Google Chrome or Edge, this one will open up the developer tools. This is a very, very powerful tool. And it's free, it's in the browser. You need to have it docked to the bottom. You don't need to, but it's more efficient. If your ones look like this, it's over here to the right. You can click the three dots, dock to the bottom. That's here. We can inspect everything. So if you go to elements and click this arrow, we will inspect the username field. So if I just click here, you can see here that we have the input section and in there, there's the ID username. That was exactly our address here. So Power Automate for desktop just referred to this field by the address here in the developer tools. We could have created this one ourselves, and you can see, I can even say that I want to have the input and then I want to change it to name, username. That will also work. Just let me show you how we'll do it. So if I double click again, untick custom, I can just change this one here to name, wasn't it? like this, and then we'll click update and we can run it. So if I just run it again, this one will open up a new one and we type in the username. Be aware that if we got duplicates, let me go back here, say that we get several input fields with the same name, then we will have to specify it further. That one will be a more advanced lesson, but you will not imagine that there will be several input fields with the ID username. The web developers from this web page would have thought of that. What do you think about the quality of this lesson? Please post it in the comment below. That will help me a lot. Thank you. So now you know how this originated. So I closed down my browser again with the challenges. And here we have uh, now filled in the username. We will do the exact same thing with the password. So either uh, just copy this or drag in a new one. Here again, we go to this drop down. We will not use the username field, of course. We will add a new UI element. And we will need to have the internet login opened. Oh, I, for some reason, uh, closed it. That was not the purpose. So I'll open it again here. So here I'll find the password. And to find the password again, 
just find a field, click control, then left click with your mouse. This one will create a UI element. So what do I need to fill in here? Well, that was the value of the password variable. So I'll just refer to the password variable. Click the X here, find the password like this, then click save. Now let's try to run this automation to see that this works. So now I can fill in the password. Let me just uh, verify that we can actually log in. We can, I'll log out again. So if I go back to Power Automate for desktop, let's also fix the name of this UI element. So again, go up here. You can right click now, rename or press F2, F12, sorry. So here is the password field. We have fixed it. So now we need another thing. We need to click the login button. That one was this one here. And to do so, we'll find a click link on web page here, drag it in underneath. So here we'll again refer to the browser instance variable. We'll create a new UI element for the button. Let's try to create it another place that's possible. So I'll save here. This one will give us an error. That's fine because it says we need an, a UI element. We can create it over here in the UI elements. So click this stack, click add UI element, and this one will also open up the UI element picker. I want the login button. We have two different choices. I think it will work whether or not we choose the big button, that one will work, but it will also work if we click here. I just choose the big button. So control, left click with your mouse. We have now the button login. I can click done here. So I'll press F2 and here I'll say login button like this and have it renamed. Now we use this UI element over here in our click link on web page. So double click to open it, choose the drop down and find the login button like this. Then I click save. So now we have all our three actions. We can now open up a browser and log in. So let's try to run the automation to verify that it works. Username, password, click login. We're now logged in. Second part of the exercise is to take a screenshot of this area. So what we will do here, let me minimize this, 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 is that we'll create a folder on our desktop for the screenshots. You can place your folder whenever you want or wherever you want. So I right click new folder. Here I will just say screenshot like this. Now I will get the address of this folder. So hover your mouse over, shift, right click, copy as path. Then I go back to my Power Automate for desktop. I'll also create a new variable for this folder. Make it a good habit of creating variables for things that can change. That is best practice when you develop. So what I'll do here is that I'll go over here to input output variables, input. Here I will say folder path like this. I'll give it a default value by pasting in the value that I just copied. Remember to move the quotation mark in the end and in the start. I will also call this folder path by external name. It's not, uh, we don't use it now, but if we did, it will be called folder path. Then I can click create. So now I can use this folder path when I take a screenshot. Find a take screenshot of web page here on the web, uh, web data extraction and drag it in. So we'll do it right after we click the link on the web page. So I, I'm referring to the browser instance, that's fine. I will capture it by taking the entire web page. I can either save it to the clipboard or to a file. Here, I'll choose my image file and the file format. I want a PNG. So first I click the drop down in this file format and then choose PNG. Now I can use my address that I want to refer to when I want to save. And I just created a variable for that. That was the folder path. So if I go up here, select the variable that will be the folder path. Then I'll say I want to go inside it and then I can name it. So I will just call mine screenshot dot PNG, then I can click save. Now let's try to run the automation again. So I run it, launch a new Chrome, log in, take a screenshot. There you go. Let's inspect the folder on our desktop to see that we actually have a screenshot. Here we have a screenshot of the web page. So far, so good. But 
If I run the robot again, this screenshot will be overwritten over and over. Let me show you a nice trick where we can do dynamic naming. We will use this trick a lot. So if I go back to Power Automate for desktop, we will use the date when this robot starts. We will take the date down to the seconds and use that in the file name. That is dynamic naming. I'll find a get current date and time here and I'll pick it in in the beginning of the robot. This one will just produce a variable called current date and time. I'll click save. Now I will convert this current date and time into a text variable. So I'll find a convert date time to text here and drag it in just after. I will take my current date time and transfer it into a text variable. So date time to convert. Click the X here and then find the current date and time. We can see that the variables we produce is a formatted date time named. This one will be a text variable. I can use the standard formats. This one will give us some uh, really standard ones. You can see it here. But since I want to use it in the file name, I really want it to be nicely formatted. So I choose custom here. Here I can put in a little bit of code. It's really, really easy. For example, if I put in four Y's, this one will put in a year. Of course, this is 2022 when I make this video. So it will be called 2022 in this text variable. If you want to learn a little bit more about that, let me show you where to get it from in 10 seconds. But first, I'll just create the custom format. I want a year. Then I want a month that is two big M's. If you press small M's, it will be minutes. So here I'll say days, then I want hours. I want a 24 hour format because that is easiest when I re when I name my files Then I want minutes. And that one was the small M's. I also want seconds. I can even go with milliseconds and the likes, but this is fine. We will not have the same robot run in the same seconds. So this will work. Then I can click save and back to where I got. Let me just open it again, where I got these ones from. So let me open up a Google and then I can search for date.net custom date time format. And you will pick this one here, custom date and time format strings. Click it. This is the Microsoft. So here, if I scroll a little bit down, you can see that here we got the codes. So for example, I use the four Y's. So I scroll a little bit down it's alphabetically. You can see here four Y's. That is the year as a four digit number. Similarly, I use two S's for seconds. That one is here. So you can just save this for a reference. You will be using this in the future. Always check the Microsoft documentation to use it in our flow. I can click save here. I will just use this text variable in my naming. So open up the text screenshots of web page and then just before the screenshots use the variable. So click the X here, take the formatted date time. It should look like this. Then I can click save. Let's try to run the robot again. So now we will do dynamic naming. And if I go back to my folder out here, you can see that I have now created a screenshot with the name of the date and time when the robot ran. Isn't that clever? So here you learn how to automate browsers, use variables and do dynamic naming. Click the link on the screen that will take you to the next lesson.